Okay, we were talking about the forms as existing in another world for Plato, these patterns in reality that exist in another world that we see with our mind. And I just want to have, uh, just kick around a couple examples here, and we'll move in here uh, in the next videos. We'll move through these in the next videos. Um, one example of the forms that I think is great is uh, uh, the idea of justice, right? The idea of uh, objective morality and justice, right? You believe in, I'm sure, social justice, but let's just take justice, for example. Uh, and I always tell the students, now you're not in the class, but um, you can kind of think this thought experiment. I don't think this is a thought experiment, but I, and I, my professor uh, used this example years ago. Uh, if I were to come into the class and say, uh, I'm a sexist, I think men are uh, superior to women, uh, or even vice versa, whatever, um, and I will just give men A's in the class and women because they're not as good, they get C's. Uh, and then we'll go on from there. And, you know, if, if you really, if you really uh, work hard, maybe you can earn a C plus or something like that. But the men start with A's and, you know, they can go down from there. You'd probably say, that's not fair. That's not just. How dare you, right? And I would say, well, wait a minute. Who's to say what fairness is? I'm in charge. I decide what fairness is. I guess you can protest. You can go to the dean or you can do this. You can fight back. But really what truth is is really a matter of who's in charge and who has the power. That's not what Plato thinks. Plato thinks, well, wait a minute. What if you can actually convince people? Because you really think that's unjust. You don't just think it's justice is, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this, uh, you don't really think it's it's uh, just a matter of who's in charge. Don't you actually think that there's something wrong with sexism, that there's something unjust about it, or there's something unjust about racism, uh, another example, right? What is the status of justice? What's justice? And Plato thinks that if you really believe in justice and you actually fight for justice in these things, justice in these things, you're actually going to try to convince me that there's this thing called justice independent of you and me. And that if through reason and dialogue, we can actually get to this pattern or form of justice, right? That when you say that's not fair, you're actually appealing to that, that mind independent, uh, objective reality of justice. Okay. So when people get into arguments, even though they recognize that there are power differentials and things like this, that if you believe reason is possible, then you have to believe in mind-independent objects that you're arguing about, particularly moral arguments, mathematical arguments, uh, even, even for Plato, aesthetic arguments or arguments about the beautiful. Plato thinks that when people argue about the beautiful, they actually think those things are, are, are actually beautiful. Do you ever, the example I was give is, do you ever play a song, uh, you like music or, you know, you listen to a new song and you, you like this new song, and you play it for your friend and they don't like it, you think something's wrong with them. You think, we, we don't hear that? Don't you see that? In other words, you, you recognize that there's something that universal or objective about it that everybody should agree with. Now, Plato thinks beauty uh, is not in the eye of the beholder. As I said in the last video, he thinks beauty is actually objective. And it sounds nuts to think this because we're so trained to think that beauty is completely subject. Now, he wouldn't, argue, he wouldn't disagree that there are some subjective elements to beauty, but you'd be surprised how objective beauty is. And I'll show you, in the, I'm going to put... Uh, a couple YouTube videos up about uh, the way um, there are uh, patterns in music and that you don't realize that most pop songs have the same pattern to them or the same form to them. Uh, there's a great video with Bobby McFerrin who talks about the pattern of the pentatonic scale. Okay, so I'll put these video up, videos up next. And what the idea here is to show that there are patterns or similarities, if you want to think, there are forms. Um, to music that make it similar and that the reason people like music is that it actually follows certain patterns, okay? And those patterns are in a certain sense what Plato means by the forms.